All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started, and you can join us when he gets here. I'm Chris Weatherby, Senior Transportation and Shipping Analyst at the City. It's my pleasure to be here back at Capital Inc. again, hosting the dry bulk panel. So we have a great panel. We're going to kick off here with a lot of energy. Um, you know, we have a great panel lined up here. So we have Gary Vogel, who's the CEO and Director of uh, Eagle Bulk Shipping, John Wobensmith, who is from Jenko, the President and CEO, Para Heiberg from Golden Ocean, Lucas Bomparis, who's the President of Safe Bulkers, Robert Bugby, who is going to join us, I'm sure, at some point. Stamatis Dantanis, uh, who's also the president and CEO of Synergy um, Maritime. So I think we have a great panel, like I said, I want to kick off and, and kind of jump right in. Probably makes sense to talk a little bit about uh, supply demand first, because that's always sort of top of mind for folks. But, you know, clearly there's, there's sort of the, the current event dynamic that probably it makes sense to start off first. Um, so maybe we'll do that. So why don't I just Gary, run to you here first, and can you give us a sense, just sort of what we've been hearing a lot with the U.S. and China and some of the trade dynamics back and forth. You guys play in a little bit of the smaller size, um, you know, vessels. Can you give us a sense of what you think is happening from a demand perspective? Do the trade dynamics that we've been hearing a lot, a lot about, you know, are they, are they stymieing demand right now? Do we expect to see things kind of loosen up as we move forward? You know, phase one deal that maybe is partially done, um, does that help? Yeah, I mean, cl clearly a, a phase one deal, uh, whatever that is, would, would be positive, and of course, and uh, and a purchase of agricultural products, you know, from the U.S. would be per would be positive, um, and the timing would as well, given that we're in the fourth quarter, on the back of the uh, the U.S. harvest. You know, having said that, um, there's been an adjustment around these. Uh, we've we've now been uh, well over a year since last July, and a lot of the soybean, which is a major commodity that we're talking about, um, Brazil has filled that gap. But there's some exogenous things happening. Um, Asian, the swine flu has been extremely detrimental to soybean demand in, in China, so it's going to be the second year in a row with um, contraction in that regard. So I think, you know, overall it, it just hasn't been positive, but any unwinding of this it really is. You know, day one we said that we weren't that concerned about the direct impact for that substitution aspect I was talking about. But if we go back and look at where global growth a year ago, IMF had you know 70 basis points on global growth GDP has been taken off from last mm -hmm. July to now. And that's about $600 billion of, of destruction, if you will. And that, that's meaningful in an industry which is highly correlated to GDP growth. So, so I think the dry bulk in general across the board has done quite well considering the demand side of things. And I think Ted spoke about it, the supply side um, being re relatively muted has yep. really helped that. Absolutely. John, maybe you could talk a little bit about sort of China and, and iron ore and just broadly sort of commodity demand. You know, what are your expectations for 2020? How do you see sort of the demand dynamic playing out? Well, I think um, <clears throat> just building on, on Gary's point, just to take a step back for a second before we talk about 2020, I think what's interesting is um, while the the trade war, the tariffs have been uh, detrimental to, in, in my mind, detrimental to uh, stock valuations and equity valuations. The reality is, particularly on the, uh, on the iron ore front, I, I think it's been beneficial um, to the dry bulk industry. And what I mean by that is, it's very clear that the tariff situation has had an effect on slowing the growth of the, of the Chinese economy. And China, in order to counterbalance that, really doesn't have any other way except for direct stimulus into infrastructure building, which correlates directly to the steel industry, which is why we saw steel production last year up 6%. We've seen it up 9% year to date. So while the tariffs, again, have been not great for equity valuations, these stocks just don't screen well because of the relationship with China. But for dry bulk as an industry, I think this has actually been a, a positive thing. So what I'm hopeful is that as we, as hopefully these trade wars unwind, that the equity valuations also start to uh, to improve. Now moving to 2020, I think there's a, there's a few catalysts. One, you know, as Ted mentioned, as Gary mentioned, on the supply side, we still have a very low supply growth, two to three percent projected for next year. Mm -hmm. The overall order book for dry bulk is around 11% of the fleet. 7% of the fleet is 20 years and older, so we expect some increased scrapping as we get into next year, particularly with the regulations. And then on the demand side, you know, we see anywhere from 3 to 4% ton mile demand growth 
um, led primarily by iron ore and primarily by Valley coming back on stream into 2020 and 2021. Okay, that's very helpful. Uh, per, wanted to get to you and talk a little bit about iron ore stockpiles and maybe just fourth quarter activity. Internally at City, we've been sort of picking up some dynamics that would suggest that construction activity is picking up in the fourth quarter uh, in China, and we can keep our fingers crossed that it actually does play out. Any sense of sort of your view on, on Chinese iron ore stocks and, and how maybe you think those play sort of in the relative short term over the course of the next you know, quarter or two? Yeah, well, what, what we saw was uh, was due to the low, yeah, the, the Brazil accident in uh, in the first half of the year, you saw a big draw on the stocks mm -hmm. of iron ore, which has actually been expected for, for several years because the stocks were high. So, uh, so we were actually expecting them to come down, not for that reason, but uh, but that happened. Uh, going into what we have seen in, during Q3, it did start to pick up again. Uh, and then we also see uh, a still, still uh, uh, a high demand for steel and steel products, and so the consumption of the iron ore is still there. But, uh, and, and that both those two factors, and again, Valle saying still keeping up their, uh, their export um, target for, for this year, we actually see a pretty good uh, uh, export volumes or uh, import, depending on how you look at it, uh, for, for a second or fourth quarter as well. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, Lucas, want to get you involved as well. I guess maybe the, a similar question I asked John, how do you think about sort of the 2020 dynamic? Anything specific that we should be thinking about that you think maybe could catch us by surprise from a demand perspective? Uh, look, the important thing uh, in China is that uh, there is a quite a substantial queue in the shipyards uh, for vessels that are trying to install scrubbers and there are also substantial delays from that we can observe. Uh, this takes a uh, substantial uh, uh, amount of, of tonnage uh, out of the market uh, and uh, we are able to enjoy a very good uh, market right now. Uh, in, this, uh, in the past and in this quarter, we have a very good rates. Uh, I think two, two points uh, we need to make here is, first of all, in China, uh, we have the 70 years from the establishment of uh, People's Republic of China and uh, 2020 is a celebration here and they will do whatever it takes to continue their development. And from the other side, uh, in the United States, we have an uh, election here in 2020. So also here, uh, the, the, the president, the government will do whatever it takes uh, to have a good year. So I think the prospects of uh, uh, dry bulk, the, I mean, uh, the last quarter and the 2020 will be very good. Okay. Robert, do you have a view on, on 2020? Anything that might catch us by surprise?